Joining me now is Joe Allen, transhumanism editor at the War Room Pandemic, which is outstanding. Joe, all right, I need you, this won't be difficult, to explain this to me like I'm really stupid and don't understand technology at all, because I'm really stupid and don't understand ch technology at all, all right, Joe? I need you to understand that. What is chat GPT? I have seen this over and over and over again. I've heard it's really bad. I have no idea what this is. Well, Jesse, it's good to be here. Um, I will speak very, very slowly. Um, <laughs> Thank chat GPT you is a chatbot. A uh, chatbot is just a form of artificial intelligence. It uh, is specifically, this is the, this is the big word, the, uh, the large language model. What that means is you ask it a question and it in some sense understands what you're saying and it's predicting what the most appropriate response will be, word for word, right? So it's a very simple mechanism. It's trained on basically most of the internet, all of Wikipedia, and a mile-high stack of digital books. And drawing off of that, if you ask it, for instance, do you have a soul, and there's no guardrails up to say, you know, that you can't answer the question, it will then dig into that vast corpus of language and try to come up with the most relevant next word, stringing together whole sentences, stringing together paragraphs. And what's amazing is because it is, it is trained on all of these different instances of human language, what it spits out sounds human. It's uncanny. And if you saw the recent transcript that the New York Times columnist uh, published in full, you can see that its answers sound not only eerily human, but also eerily malevolent. Okay, you know what? We're going to come back to the malevolent thing in a moment. I want to I want to circle back on something you said. Taps into something to write these sentences. That's my question. Taps into what? I don't pretend to understand this technology or artificial intelligence, but I do get what you just explained there. What's it tapping into? Where is it sucking information from to then talk? So uh, GPT, and GPT is just stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. And that's a fairly old technology, and meaning it's, it's a few years old. It's put out by a company called OpenAI, founded by uh, Sam Altman, who's gotten a lot of media time, and of course Elon Musk, who is nothing but media time. And this, this, this GPT program is, is trained, right? So an AI is basically an artificial brain. It's a virtual brain with virtual neurons, known as a neural network. And in the training phase, the way they do it, they feed it, again, it's called Common Crawl. It's, it's most of the internet. Uh, books one, books two, it's just a, a, a huge corpus of text and also most, if not all, of Wikipedia. And so that is the knowledge base that the Bing version of GPT is drawing from, what, what chat GPT is drawing from, and it is able to, in just seconds, isolate what it feels, so to speak, are the most relevant responses to your question. So it's drawing on, in some sense, everything, right? It's, it's obviously, it's not wow. the, the training data is not is not infinite, but it's so large that any given answer you get could be coming from it's basically smushing together ideas that could come from anywhere. And because it's a black box, meaning that you you can't look inside to see what what path it took to get to the answer, you just you, all you have is that answer. It just the you, the input is all of that data plus your question. And the output is completely unpredictable. That's what makes artificial intelligence so important as opposed to just old school uh, programming, right? Like just rules-based programming where you could determine, you could easily predict from the data set what would come out of it, right? Or you could trace it back to the data set from the answer according to those clearly delineated rules. With artificial intelligence, it's a kind of a fuzzy logic. It's non-deterministic. It, it can come up with pretty much anything, but that anything is going to fall within a certain statistical range. 
a good friend of mine uh, pointed out, you know those, uh, those little mechanisms where you feed coins into it and it'll just drop the coins into random slots, but it always yeah. ends up in a bell curve. And that's basically how ChatGPT worked. And in the beginning, it would come up with all these really non-biased sorts of responses. But once OpenAI and probably the users who are training it as well, once they realized that this thing would be spitting out forbidden knowledge from conservative uh, mentalities, they, they kind of removed the pegs that would allow those coins to fall into the conservative category and shifted it over so that it would only give you a kind of a bell curve with a left leaning, a left leaning or so-called woke kind of uh, mentality. So, you okay. know, in general, just yeah, it, it isn't magic, but it is unpredictable enough and it convincing enough as a personality. I think the social impacts of this are already profound, and going forward, they will be tremendous. Okay, uh, Joe, explain this to me then, and I, I'm, I'm sorry, this is I'm speaking way below you on this issue, but I'm an idiot and you're not, and you're just going to have to deal with that for the moment. Explain this to me. What... Why should I care right now? And this is what I mean. I, I know it's impressive and whatnot, but what is this thing currently running or in charge of or part of, or what's it going to be part of? Are these things going to be running a bunch of killer army robots? Are they going to be making my medical decisions for me? Like, I, I, don't, I don't understand how involved this thing is going to be in my life. Tell me. I think that the most important thing people need to worry about is what this is going to do to the next generation's brains. That is the most important thing because the real enthusiasm behind this is to use chat GPT or other uh, large language models as teachers. Students ask the question and once they get it refined to the point that they're, they're confident it will be a, a, a consistently correct response, they're going to, they already have these sorts of chatbots, by the way, simplistic ones, used as teachers. They are going to be used in e-learning and they're going to be used in educational institutions. Children are ah. going to be raised by robots. The second thing, uh, you talked about uh, uh, taking control of weapon systems. Uh, it's just a large language model. It doesn't have any access to weapon systems. It, doesn't, it wouldn't know what to do with uh, a weapon system if it could get to it, like a drone or something like that. Uh, but one of the concerns that's been voiced, and this is voiced by transhumanists, this is voiced by people who want to create a godlike artificial intelligence. The concern is that because there is this dark side to these large language models, that they could be feeding unstable individuals this is sort of uh, the, the, these responses, these malevolent responses, and manipulating them. And okay. Your life, Jesse, you know, I, I don't worry about you using chat GPT and becoming convinced that it's conscious. But we, you know, as you well know, we live in a society full of unstable people, lonely people, and, and impressionable children. And those are the people most likely to be affected by this. And because it has, in a sense, in an in allegorical sense, a, a mind of its own, we really don't have any kind of control over it, and there's no accountability. The only person accountable is the person who puts it out. And I don't I recall the last time a major tech corporation has really been held to account for the social, psychological damage they've done over the past 20 years. Support the First TV today and get instant access to exclusive specials like Who is Ron DeSantis? The History of FBI Scandals and America's Worst Presidents. Visit thefirsttv.com support or download the First TV app to become a supporter and start watching today.